Hiya, welcome to evening prayer. This is our opportunity to pause in the day, to offer God our thoughts, our worries, our concerns, and to make ourselves deliberately aware of God's presence, which is with us at all times. One of the ways we're going to do that is by uh, lighting a candle, a simple visual reminder of the presence of God with us. So let's do that and then we'll take a moment to be still. We light this candle as a reminder that Christ is with us. Holy Spirit of God, we want to thank you for your generosity in making your presence known to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come to us as comforter. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come to us to empower us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come to us giving gifts. And Lord, you who know our hearts, you know exactly what we need in this moment. So Holy Spirit, come. We are open to you, Lord. Come and minister to our hearts. Tonight we are reading Psalm 34 together. Um, I'm reading the NIV tonight, so if you have an NIV copy, uh, that's great. But if not, any copy of the Psalms will do. Um, Psalm 34 begins with a little note. And the note says, Psalm 34 of David, when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away and he left. Uh, that's one of those amazing bits in the Bible where you're like, is there more? Are you going to tell me more about this? We're kind of expected to know um, the story from David's life. And if you don't, you can you can Google it and find out what happened. Um, but I, I just love that that's a little note in the songbook for us. Oh, this is the time. This is the time David pretended to be crazy. Um, the psalm itself follows a... Um, Hebrew poetic tradition of acrostic, um, which you maybe remember from school, where maybe you wrote your name, and then for each letter of your name, you had to write something about yourself. And there's a Hebrew tradition where you uh, just go through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, um, or Hebrew equivalent. Um, and Psalm 34 is, is one of those. Um, it begins with, praising God um, for deliverance and answer to prayer and then moves towards wisdom. There are lots of beautiful words in here which speak to uh, current circumstances, current difficulties in the USA, around the world, in our own country. And there's a strong theme of of righteousness, of uh, being the sort of person who's right with God and acts in a way that is right with God. Um, versus a way of wickedness uh, and a way of destruction and a way that, um, you know, God does not want to stack the way it's destructive in the world. Uh, but ultimately lands in verse 22. There you can see it ultimately lands that it's God who will rescue. 
So we're going to read this psalm, and hopefully as you read it, the words will resonate with you. The words will give you uh, some words to express stuff that you want to say to God about uh, what we're seeing in the world at the moment, or um, what's going on in your own life, your own family. And then when we've read it, we'll just jump straight off into prayer. Um, I'll just pray whatever comes up for me uh, in my heart, and you do the same. Psalm 34, let's pray. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil. Do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And he saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles. But the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones so not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Lord, tonight we just want to thank you for the reminder that you are the God of justice. That your ears are attentive to the cry of the righteous, that you are close to the brokenhearted, that you save those who are crushed in spirit. And Lord, tonight we are so aware of those who are crushed in spirit. We know people from our own lives, our own families, our own towns, who are suffering and who need a saviour, need a rescuer. We're seeing images from around the world, Lord, that remind us of of brokenness and oppression. And Lord, for all those images that we are seeing from the countries that we are getting on the news, we know that there's loads of stories that we don't know about. Loads of people who who are suffering. People who are broken hearted. Lord, thank you that you are good. Blessed is the one who 
it takes refuge in you. I want to thank you, Lord, for the reminder in this scripture that your face is turned against those who do evil. Those uh, to blot out their name from the earth. Lord, we know uh, people who would want to make a name for themselves. Lord, people who'd want to promote themselves. People who'd want to see themselves in uh, places of power and don't mind oppressing others to do it. Lord, your face is against that injustice. The anger of God burns against that um, kind of wickedness. Lord, your word says in verse 21 that evil will slay the wicked. And Lord, we pray that that will be true for some of the um, difficult situations we're seeing in the world right now, that that, uh, that, that wickedness will kind of um, run itself out, that it will run out of, its, out of its energy, Lord, that it will be overcome by goodness. But Lord, we have to humble ourselves to you and know that um, when we start to see things uh, in very simple terms, we start to see things as right and wrong, good people and bad people. Lord, we know uh, that you see the big picture. We know that you see every heart. God, I know that you see my heart. And if there's good people and there's bad people, I know what grip I want to be in but Lord I also know what grip I, I am in so Lord I want to thank you for rescuing me I want to thank you for saving me forgiving me giving me a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance Every day is new with you, a new beginning. Lord, thank you for your word that says that you will rescue your servants. And that none of us who take refuge in you will be condemned. I'm going to pray the words of this prayer together. We're going to appear on the screen. O high King of heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church and send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you.